इन दिस वीडियो विल डिस्कस हाउ टू फाइंड द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्सिया ऑफ ए फ्लाई व्हील यू सी दिस इज द फ्लाई व्हील एंड एन एक्सिल इज अटैच टू द फ्लाई व्हील टू फाइंड आउट द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्सिया ऑफ ए फ्लाई व्हील यू हैव टू अटैच ए मास टू द एक्सिल बाय मींस ऑफ ए स्ट्रिंग हियर वी विल यूज ए मास ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड ग्राम एंड आई विल अटैच इट बाय मींस ऑफ ए स्ट्रिंग एंड यू सी दिस रेड मार्क विल इंडिकेट द नंबर ऑफ रोटेशन यू कैन फाइंड आउट द नंबर ऑफ रोटेशन बाय यूजिंग दिस रेड मार्क यू सी टू फाइंड द मोमेंट ऑफ इनर्स ऑफ द फ्लाई व्हील आई एम यूजिंग ए मास ऑफ फाइव हंड्रेड ग्राम व्हिच इज अटैच टू द एक्सिल बाय मींस ऑफ ए स्ट्रिंग एंड द स्ट्रिंग इज वार्प अराउंड द एक्सिल यू सी आई एम वार्पिंग द स्ट्रिंग अराउंड द एक्सिल ओके And when the mass is allowed to fall and the string is detached, the potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy of mass m plus kinetic energy of the flywheel plus total energy used to overcome friction of the flywheel. In the experiment, we have taken the mass attached to the axle is equal to 500 gram, but in theory, we take the mass as m. So At a height h, the potential energy of the mass is m g h, where m is the mass and g is the acceleration due to gravity, and h is the height uh, through which the mass is fallen. And when the mass is allowed to fall through a height h, applying conservation of energy, the potential energy of the mass m. Will be equal to the kinetic energy of mass m. That is the mass of 500 gram. Here you have taken 500 gram, but you in the theory you take mass as m. So the total energy will be converted into kinetic energy of mass m plus the kinetic energy of the flywheel because due to the falling of this mass m, uh, the the flywheel is rotating, and uh, that is why. You, it is the kinetic energy of the flywheel, and the total energy used to overcome friction. You have friction in the flywheel, so some energy will be lost to overcome friction. That is why the potential energy uh, mgh will be equal to the kinetic energy of mass m, kinetic energy of flywheel, and total energy used to overcome friction. And the kinetic energy of mass m is equal to half m v square, and kinetic energy of the flywheel that is equal to half i omega square, and the total energy to overcome friction. Suppose it is equal to n into f. Here we have taken f is the energy for revolution of the flywheel used in overcoming friction. So for n number of revolution, the total energy to overcome friction is n into f. And if you uh, substitute v equal to r omega, then this will be equal to half into m into r square omega square plus half i omega square plus n into f. And here r is the radius of the axle, and omega is the angular velocity, i is the moment of inertia of the flywheel, and n is the number of revolution the flywheel makes reaching the ground or falling the ground. And this is also equal to the number of turns on the axle. That is the number of turns of the thread you have taken. And in this experiment, we have taken n value is equal to n value is equal to ten. That is the number of turns on the axle. I have shown you that is equal to ten. Then from equation one and two, that is applying the conservation of energy, you can write. mgh is equal to half m r square omega square plus half i omega square plus n f this is equation number 3 and when the 500 g mass fall on the ground that is the mass m fall on the ground the flywheel also rotate 
and suppose that rotation number of rotation is equal to n1 that is let n1 is equal to total number of revolution made by the flywheel before coming to rest that means after falling from the ground and before coming to rest and uh, uh, f is the frictional force so n1 multiplied by f must be equal to half i omega square that is the kinetic energy of the flywheel must be equal to the opposing force made by the um, flywheel that is the force due to, to overcoming the friction so if you equate this equation you can find out f a value will be equal to half i omega square divided by n1 and if you put the value of f in equation 3 then you will get uh, this equation if you solve it then this will be equal to i that is equal to 2 mgh minus m r square omega square divided by omega square into 1 plus n divided by n1 so if you put the then these values and then you can calculate the value of i that is the moment of inertia of the flywheel m is the mass used you can use mass of 500 gram or 1 kg or 1.5 kg or 2 kg like this in this experiment i have shown you a mass of 500 gram so m is equal to 500 gram and uh, g is the acceleration due to gravity and h is the height height of the flywheel from the ground where you uh, uh, detach the mass m and here r is the i have told you r is the radius of the axle and omega is the angular velocity of the flywheel and n is the number of turns and that is uh, the number of revolutions of the flywheel on reaching the um, ground number of revolution made by the flywheel on re reaching the ground or falling the ground that is equal to the number of turns uh, wound on the axle and n1 is the number of revolution made by the flywheel before coming to rest after falling the ground and before coming to rest and we how you can find out or determine the angular velocity as i have told you n1 is the number of revolutions made by the flywheel before coming to rest and after falling the ground suppose the time taken for this number of rotation or revolution n1 is equal to t so t is the time taken for n1 revolution so what will be the average angular velocity of the flywheel we know average angular velocity is equal to theta by t so for one revolution you have angle 2 pi so for n1 number of revolution the total angle will be equal to 2 pi into n1 so theta will be equal to 2 pi into n1 divided by time so this will give you the average angular velocity of the flywheel and in the experiment you take the frictional force acting on the flywheel is constant if you take uh, the frictional force constant that is the flywheel will move with uniform um, uh, retardation then retardation if retardation is equal to zero then we calculate the average angular velocity like this initial velocity plus final velocity divided by two but when the flywheel is at rest final angular velocity is zero so the average angular velocity will be equal to initial velocity angular velocity divided by two so what will be the initial angular velocity initial angular velocity will be equal to two into average angular velocity and average angular velocity is 2 pi into n1 divided by uh, t so you can calculate the initial angular velocity is equal to 2 into 2 pi n1 divided by t so omega will be equal to 4 pi n1 divided by t and if you use a uh, 500 gram mass then uh, n1 in our experiment we get n1 is equal to 9 and the time taken for the uh, nine number of rotation is equal to 10 second then omega can be calculated like this 2 pi into n1 by t so 2 into 3.14 into 9 divided by 10 so it will be equal to 11.3 radian and radius of the axle you can find out by using the vernier caliper 
इन आवर वर्नियर कैलिपर द लिस्ट काउंट इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन मेन स्केल रीडिंग वन पॉइंट एट बी सी इज टू सो वर्नियर स्केल रीडिंग जीरो पॉइंट जीरो टू सो द टोटल डायमीटर विल बी इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट एट टू एंड रेडियस विल बी हाफ ऑफ द डायमीटर सो इट इज इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट नाइन वन सेंटीमीटर एंड यू कैन मेजर द हाइट बाई यूजिंग ए मीटर स्केल एंड वी हैव कैलकुलेटेड द हाइट फ्रॉम द एक्सेल टू द ग्राउंड दैट इज इक्वल टू एट्टी सिक्स पॉइंट फोर सेंटीमीटर देन यूज द फॉर्मूला आई इक्वल टू टू एम जी एच माइनस एम आर स्क्वायर ओमेगा स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाई ओमेगा स्क्वायर इन टू वन प्लस एन बाई एन वन एंड इफ यू पुट द डिफरेंट वैल्यूज दैट इज टू इंटू एम यू हैव यूज फाइव हंड्रेड ग्राम जी इज नाइन हंड्रेड एट्टी मीटर then uh, m is equal to 500 gram your r value radius is equal to 0.91 cm and omega we have calculated 11.3 radian then here also omega 11.3 radian and n we have taken 10 and n1 is equal to 9 then if you calculate these values then you will find out the moment of inertia of the fly will is 315 Uh, 542 315 542.9 gram per centimeter square or you can convert it into kg per meter square you see how you can calculate the diameter of the axle by using a slide caliper you see so in this experiment you basically determine three things n n1 and t t is the time taken by the fly wheel Uh, when the mass fall on ground the time taken by the flywheel for rotation uh, that is n1 rotation